Hi, it's Michael Farr from Farr Miller in Washington. Interesting week for the markets in Europe and in the U.S. on Capitol Hill, in the earnings, and in the economic data. I'm going to try and put together a few messages for us here today. There's a lot to talk about, and I don't want to overwhelm the uh, uh, computer files. So this morning, let's take a quick uh, look at what happened yesterday. Jamie Dimon was on Capitol Hill. I also was on Capitol Hill with Maria Bartiromo and Greg Vallier, uh, and we were discussing his testimony. That clip is available on CNBC's website, and we'll have a link for you as well. But uh, I think that Jamie Dimon acquitted himself very well. He apologized for the trading loss uh, that they took. They took on some undue, uh, miscalculated risk in their large trading operation. It was kind of stupid. It continues to be stupid. They haven't unwound that trade completely yet. But uh, Diamond, uh, I think, did a very good job of apologizing, taking responsibility for what he needed to do. His tone was deferential, but he held the line on what his bank stood for and the good work that they were doing. So that was good. The other thing that I thought was really good about that was that the people who took risk were the people who suffered. Culpability was connected to consequence. Shareholders suffered. Shareholders took risk. It's a shame that they suffered. It's a shame that we suffered. We're shareholders, too. The market cap of J.P. Morgan declined as a result of this. The bank itself, depositors, did not suffer. Taxpayers did not suffer. The balance sheet of the bank and its reserves did not suffer. This is an earnings issue. J.P. Morgan earns something over $2 billion a month. So this might be a $4 billion issue. It's going to come out of earnings. Earnings will be reduced for the year, uh, but and the stock price went down. But it's not a balance sheet issue. So uh, I don't think any great damage was done, except perhaps for the confidence in the banking system. Confidence is very important. Uh, but you know, heretofore, we've seen uh, when these people take big risks, like uh, uh, MF Global or others, taxpayers might be in a position to pay. Certainly, as we went through the banking crisis of 2008 and the real financial crisis, uh, taxpayers ended up having to come up with money and save the banking system. Not the case here, and therefore I don't think the answer is regulation. Regulation didn't save MF Global from violating almost every rule uh, that they violated in 2008. Did the same thing, overlevered the balance sheet, took on undue risk. They even violated the most sacred rule in the financial services industry of going into customers' accounts and customers' money, which is still unaccounted for uh, through MF Global. Dodd-Frank didn't help stop that. Dodd-Frank didn't help stop this trade. I don't think you micromanage or legislate or regulate your way out of risk. You make sure that those who take the risk get nailed when they're wrong, and all of a sudden they're going to be more careful about the risk they take. So, uh, banks, I don't think, look like great growth stories, but they are awfully cheap. Dick Beauvais is a friend of mine for many, many years, very uh, accomplished banking analyst, still points out that when you get a J.P. Morgan selling at a discount to, ba uh, to book value with the sort of dividend we're seeing and the amount of cash on the balance sheet, this is still a wonderful institution. We continue to hold it. Makes sense for our clients. Hang in there. I think we're going to get through this. We've got a lot of other issues going on. Check out my other blogs and my other video blogs here at Farmiller in Washington. For Farmiller in Washington, I'm Michael Farr.